In this opt, John B. King Jr., President and CEO of the Education Trust and former U.S. Secretary of Education, explains how the state of education in America has changed in the years since Donald Trump was elected president. This school year has not been ordinary. One year after the election of the 45th president, students are in schools and on college campuses during a time when this country may not seem to be living up to its ideals. We have watched while Nazis and KKK members marched across a college campus. Instead of calling out domestic terrorism, President Trump chose to condemn athletes who silently took a knee to protest injustice with more anger than he did toward white supremacists. Attorney General Jeff Sessions is attempting to return the nation to the ineffective and discredited policies of mass incarceration. Our country has experienced countless incidents where police have wrongly killed unarmed victims without any consequences, and we have witnessed all too many senseless mass shootings. Students can only hope such violence never happens to them, their families, their friends, or their classmates. We have heard rhetoric that targets people because of their religion, their race, and their family's country of origin, and students, especially, wonder if they are safe. It is irresponsible and immoral to turn our backs on immigrants who have contributed so much to our country. Yet the president attempted to put in place a travel ban directed at people of Muslim faith and rolled back the Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals DACA program that protects young people brought to this country as children, who are American in every sense except their status on paper, from deportation. Meanwhile, students eager to return to school in Puerto Rico and the U.S. Virgin Islands after the hurricane suffer the consequences of the administration's disgracefully inadequate response to the needs of our fellow Americans. Rather than protecting our underserved students, this administration is rolling back critical civil rights protections for transgender students, students of color, and students with disabilities. They have abandoned protections under Title X for sexual assault victims, questioned the value of affirmative action, and are walking away from the long-standing practice of investigating systemic injustice when civil rights complaints are filed. Additionally, the Trump administration has proposed a budget that hurts our young people, especially students of color and those from low-income families. Instead of investing in the future, it underfunds or eliminates vital assistance that gives people a chance at a better life. It raids Pell Grant aid, strips funding for educator professional development, and abandons summer and after-school programs. Instead of breaking down barriers to a college education, especially for students of color and low-income families, the current administration is putting the interests of shareholders and executives of predatory for-profit schools ahead of the interests of students and taxpayers by rolling back key protections for students. And sadly, students at historically black colleges and universities HBCUs who recognize the unique opportunities that those institutions offer to pursue educational excellence have received from the Trump administration only false hope and manufactured photo ops rather than meaningful support and investment. The promise of the American dream is under assault, and we need action to preserve it. As a former teacher and principal, as an advocate for education equity, and as a public school parent, I am convinced that the current challenges require our urgent collective commitment to equity. We all have to be making our voices heard, marching in the streets, demanding change, and being politically active. As a nation, we must ask our governors, our legislators, and our members of Congress to act on the right side of history regardless of their party. We cannot accept policies that degrade our humanity. It is time we reject them and replace them with policies that invest in students, expand opportunity, and protect civil rights if we want to save lives and strengthen our country. Education can transform lives I know firsthand because my life is proof. I grew up in Brooklyn as the son of two New York City public school educators. In October of my fourth grade year, my mother suddenly passed away. Then, my father became ill with the non-diagnosed Alzheimer's disease. Life at home was often scary and unpredictable, but school was the place that was safe, engaging, interesting, and supportive. When I was 12, my father passed away. I could easily be in prison or dead today. My teachers could have looked at me and said, here is an African-American, Latino male with a family in crisis, what chance does he have they could have given up on me, but I was blessed that they didnt. They chose to see hope and promise, and they invested in me. Not every student is as fortunate. Right now, there are students whose lives are literally on the line. It is honest to pull the disenfranchised up rather than pushing them down into the margins. If we care about what happens to our young people in the classroom, then we must absolutely care about what happens to them outside of it, from poverty to housing and healthcare, hunger and homelessness, policing, criminal justice, and the school-to-prison pipeline. We've got much work to do as a nation, but I remain convinced our best days are ahead of us.
The strength of our democracy depends on understanding our history and the ties that bind us on becoming informed and getting involved in local, state, and national issues and on recognizing that the solutions to the complex issues we face today all require us to think beyond ourselves to embrace our obligations to the greater good. Together, we can disrupt the systems of injustice that have plagued our country for far too long with a deep understanding of the historical context in which these systems were founded, and the passion and will to push these systems and institutions to be better, not just for us, but for future generations. Related Betsy DeVos announced potential title exchanges. Check this out.